Traditions are a crucial part of every culture. They remind us that we have a past which shaped who we are today. They give us a sense of belonging and they give us the opportunity to celebrate the most important events of our lives in a meaningful way. But oftentimes the traditions of our cultures might seem a bit strange to the foreign eye and sometimes they seem weird even for us. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, hi, I'm Anna and I usually make videos about the literature and gaming related topics of Central and Eastern Europe because I I feel like there's not enough content about it online. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. But today's video is gonna be a little bit different. You see, I'm a Transylvanian villager and possibly the only person who unironically enjoys living in Romania, despite my mixed Hungarian origins. And to honor my beloved country, I will tell you about some of the strangest traditions that exist over here. But before that, let me quickly explain which country I'm actually talking about. For those of you who think that writing the month at the beginning of the date is the same way of doing things. Romania is a country of 19.2 million people located in the southeastern side of Europe and our people blessed you with the invention of the quadcopter, papanash and the world's best genre of music, manele. You're welcome. The country's most common tourist injuries and deaths occur due to the people trying to take selfies with our wild bears, so please, for the love of the Dumnezeu, stay away from them. Also, Romania is known as a highly religious country with 81% of the population living by the traditions of Christian orthodoxy, but many of our customs are actually a strange mixture of Romania's pre-Christian pagan practices and the basic orthodox celebrations. <laughs> example for that would be the celebration called Bogotiaza, which is a Christian holiday celebrated on the 6th of January, commemorating the baptism of Jesus Christ. In Romania, the celebration of this holiday got mixed up with the pre-Christian traditions related to fertility and honoring the ability of fire and water to purify the world from evil spirits. And so, on this day, people follow both the Christian and the pagan traditions. You see, similarly to Serbia and other Orthodox countries, in Romania's riverside villages, the priest throws a cross into the river and young men have to jump into the water to fetch it. But women celebrate it in a different way. Many people believe that if an unmarried woman puts a small twig or leaves of basil under her pillow on the night of Pogotiaza, she will dream of her future husband. And this belief dates back to pre-Christian times. Romanian celebrations fall into two categories. There are the ones related to the time of the year and the ones related to the major events in people's lives. And while some of them are pretty similar to the surrounding Slavic countries' traditions, such as Novtelisens Yen, which is comparable to the old Slavic celebration of Ivana Kupala, you can find some pretty strange ones in various villages all around the country. Strangely enough, most of these are related to death, which just proves the validity of the country's happiness index. Disclaimer, each cultural region in Romania has their own set of beliefs and traditions, and most of the things I will talk about do not apply to the entire country, but many regions have similar yet quite different versions of these traditions. Romanian culture, death isn't seen as the end, but as a journey to the afterlife, which is why there are quite a few rituals which exist to help the deceased cross to the other world. In most regions of the country, there is a three-day time period when the cattle clock is set up in the prettiest room of the house, where the deceased's friends and family can say their proper goodbyes. In this time period, all mirrors of the house must be covered, turned around or taken off the walls. Some say this is because if the dead sees themselves in the mirror, they won't be able to cross to the afterlife and they will be stuck between life and death for eternity. I mean, living in the Balkans already feels like being stuck between life and death for eternity. Others say it's because the reflection of the dead might attract death to take another life. In some villages they use a simple black cloth, in some places they use white ones, but in my village we use this type of black and white in brighter towels. all across Romania, you might see villagers throwing a rooster across a freshly dug grave. Some say this is done because roosters can chase away the evil spirits, but according to ethnographers, this tradition dates back to ghetto Dashian times when people used to bring animals as offerings for the family of the deceased. This was the case in my village as well, chickens, roosters, ducks and geese were pretty common gifts for the families of the deceased, but nowadays people only give money to help out with the costs of the funeral ceremony. But the good people of Gorsh County, take this one step further. If the deceased was a bad person, they will pass around a black chicken over the dead body to make sure they won't turn into a moloi, which is a vampire-like creature in Romanian mythology. 
Hey, why did the rooster cross the grave? To make sure you get to the other side. In Romanian culture, the first bath after a child's baptism is considered to be a sacred event. Where's the money, Lebowski? You want that money, Lebowski? Which is why the child's first bath is prepared with the strangest ingredients. According to traditions, on the day after a child's baptism, the godmother has to prepare the bath in a smaller tub with honey, money, and a few drops of holy water. Some people even add some basil, silver, rose petals, and many other ingredients. People believe that through this ritual, the child will grow up to become brave, honest, and a rich person. But let's be realistic, no amount of holy water can make you rich in the Balkans. One of the most beloved traditions in Romania is to break a bread-like cake above the bride's head. This is supposed to bring luck to the young couple and everyone else who takes a bite out of it. This is actually done after the bride is all dressed up and ready for the wedding. The bride must sit in a chair and two people must hold and break the cake above her head. Some girls even collect the crumbs at weddings and keep them underneath their pillows which is supposed to bring them luck in their love life. So if any of you are planning to get married these days, please send me some of those crumbs. This tradition actually dates back to ancient Rome where they also also broke bread above the bride's head. And later on in medieval Europe, this tradition has developed into making a multi-layered cake above which the newlyweds could kiss. But I'm honestly glad that we kept the original one. We talked about that, we talked about christening and weddings, now let's switch to the traditions related to the time of the year. Easter in some Romanian villages is like a good bottle of Tsuika. Most women absolutely hate it because of the smell, but men are super into it. You see, in some Romanian villages, on the second day of Easter, a group of men get together to water every woman in the village in order to stop them from withering. In a more normal environment, this is done by throwing a bucket full of water onto the young lady. In other places, however, men spray women with the cheapest perfumes they can get their hands on, which turns this event into pure torture for us. To show our gratitude, we are supposed to serve the visitors drinks, snacks and give them colored eggs as a gift. And if you leave at the end of the village, by the time the guys reach your house, all of them will be completely drunk, which makes this whole event even more unbearable. This tradition was borrowed from the Hungarians of Transylvania and it spread across Bukovina and Banat as well. But its origins can be traced back to the Polish Schmigus Dingus Day related to the pre-Christian celebration of the March Equinox, when boys threw water at girls and spank them with pussy willow branches. In the eastern side of Romania and in Moldova, on the 8th day after Easter, people organize a little picnic at the cemetery in the memory of their loved ones. This is called Paștele Blajinilor or Paștele Morci, which is roughly translated as the Easter of the Dead. On this day, women have to lay down a towel or blanket on the graves, light a few candles and prepare a feast which mostly consists of this type of food. And of course, a few red Easter eggs. The priest must go from grave to grave and bless the food of each family and and offer some food for kids, relatives, friends and most importantly the people in need. Though let's be real, in Romania everyone is in need. I have no money! <laughs> It is important to note that this isn't just an excuse to have a party at the cemetery, this is the holiday of generosity. According to superstitions, on this day you are not allowed to do the laundry, beat a rug, no that's not an innuendo, or do any sort of house or garden work which might produce loud noises. You are also not allowed to badmouth anyone who is dead, even if you were at bad terms with them, because malicious gossip might attract their spirit to return and hurt your loved ones. Ziva Kuchidor, similar to the Bulgarian cookery fest, is another spring celebration when young men dressed up in colorful masks and costumes walk through the streets and playfully beat up everyone who gets in their way with some DIY whips. They also have to hit their friends and loved ones in order to give them some good luck. This celebration was banned during the communist era and it was reignited in the recent years. Nowadays it's mainly celebrated in Bronesht, which is in York County, but not only the locals take part in this celebration. You can see participants 
participants from Domnești, Pecești, Gălda de Jos, Carnic, Peunești and people from some parts of Bulgaria. These costumes are ridiculously heavy and they are decorated with fresh flowers and bells and according to tradition, the clothes they wear must be the dresses of the girls they are in love with. This celebration also has some pre-Christian origins and it's related to rebirth and fertility. The goat dance is low-key my favorite Romanian tradition and I'm still pissed about the fact that in my village we do not celebrate this. <laughs> also known as Capra, is a Romanian dance performed around New Year's Eve. For this occasion, young men dress up as goats, wearing goat masks, horns and sheepskin coats, or in some cases colorful rugs, and they go from house to house to perform the dance at each door. During the 19th century, Romanians believed that goats could predict the New Year's weather and the Capra dance, considered a pagan dance, became a ritual to bring fertility, becoming a prominent part of folk tradition. I guess we could agree that this is our horniest tradition. Now, as you can see, Romanian folklore and traditions are quite wicked, dark, and honestly charming, and I think this aesthetic could serve as a great inspiration for a Witcher like video game. But enough about my opinions. What strange traditions exist in your country? Tell me in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you're interested in topics related to Central and Eastern European literature and gaming, please consider subscribing. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great day.